Number 83. What is the hydroxide concentration, the OH minus, in a solution of 1.25 molar NH3 and a 0.78 molar NH4 NO3 solution, right? They give us a balanced equation, cool, and then they gave us a KB. Now, there's two ways that we could do this, this question. Now, since I have two concentrations of a conjugates of each other, right, we can use the Henderson Hasselbach. However, that equation is generally towards acids, right? If we look at the Henderson Hasselbach equation, it's pH equals pKa plus the log of the base concentration divided by the acid. But if you notice, they're looking for a pH and we have to give a pKa. In this case, we have a Kb, so not a Ka, and they wanna look for the hydroxide concentration instead of anything that has to do with the H+. Remember, the hydronium H+, goes with pH. So in this case, you could do Henderson-Hasselbach, but you're gonna have to do a lot of conversions before we could even get here. So there's an easier method to do this. So when you have buffers and you're looking for base components, it's easier to just work with an ice table. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to say, okay, we got NH3, that's aqueous, that's ammonia, plus H2O, that's a liquid. They're in equilibrium because NH3 is a weak base, right? We produce the conjugate acid of NH3, which is ammonium, NH4, positive, that's aqueous. And then we produce the hydroxide ion, which is what we're solving for, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make this over here. It's kind of sloping downward, but nobody really cares. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an ice table. So ice it out. Keep in mind that when we do ice tables, remember liquids don't count. So the H2O goes bye-bye. And we're labeling this as I-C-E, ice. I stands for initial. All the initial concentrations that they stated in the beginning. There's two of them. They said that we have a solution that had 1.25 molarity of NH3, that's this guy over here, and a 0.78 molarity of NH4 NO3. So this one is pretty easy. I'm starting off with 1.25 on the NH3. But now here, I'm looking for NH4 NO3 on my equation, and I don't see it. I see a piece of it. I only see this NH4, and that's right here. When this happens, this compound is disguised as a salt. Remember, salts are ionic compounds that are generally going to be conjugates of what you're starting with, in this case, NH3. So if we just break apart NH4, NO3, it's an ionic compound. There's two polyatomics here, right? NH4 and NO3. So there's NH4 plus coming in with NO3 minus. We only care about the component that's in the balanced equation. The other component has nothing to do with acidity or basicity. So in this case, since only NH4 plus is in the equation, that's the only component that I care about. I don't care about the NO3 minus. This has nothing to do with acidity or basicity. So, if I have 0.78 molarity of the NH4 NO3, and if it's a one to one to one ratio, right? I have one NH4 in one whole NH4 NO3, this number would be the same, 0.78 molarity. And that's the number that goes right here. So just be careful just to make sure that this number is one to one ratio. Generally, it's going to be. Now, they didn't state that we started off with any OH minus, so that means that I have zero. C stands for change, change in concentration. Since I have an OH minus that started with nothing, that means the only way that the products can go is up. You can never get rid of nothing that you have. So the product side would be a plus, and the reactant side would be minus. We don't know the change at the moment, so we just say 
x. You could use any uh, variable, but you know, x is pretty standard. And then E stands for equilibrium, where you're just pulling together your initial with your change. So 1.25 minus x is just 1.25 minus x. 0 0.78 plus x is 0 0.78 plus x. And then 0 plus x is just x. Your equilibrium values are the ones that are being plugged in into your k expression. And in this case, we're working with the kb. And remember, it's just products divided by reactants. We're only taking into, cons into consideration the aqueous. That's why we get rid of the water. So in this case, it would be the two products being multiplied by each other divided by the NH3, right? So if I just put this, we have NH4 plus OH minus and NH3. And keep in mind, we want to solve for the hydroxide. It's much easier to do it this way because the hydroxide is one of these variables. So the KB value is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, and this equals. Now remember guys, when you have plus x's or minus x's, if we keep them into this equation, we're going to have to do a quadratic, and we don't want to do that. We always like to see if we could squeeze by it before we actually do the math. Keep in mind that a low Ka value or a low Kb value just means that at equilibrium, you have mostly reactants. So if I have a starting amount of 1.25, and I'm probably going to be roughly around that number, this drop is going to be probably so small, so small that it's negligible. So minus x values, we can kind of get rid of. And plus x values, we can kind of get rid of. Because the just like the change decreases so small, the change increase into this number is also so small. I can't get rid of this x because this is not a plus x at equilibrium or a minus x. This is just the variable x. So we have to keep it or else we wouldn't have a variable. So in this case, it would be 0 0.78, that's the NH4 concentration, times x divided by 1.25. Now let's just use algebra, cross multiply. So I have 1.28 times 10 to the negative fifth times 1.25. Let's see, calc's out. 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth times one. Oh boy. Oh boy, what happened to my calculator? Okay, there we go. 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth times 1.25. So I get 2.25 times 10 to the negative fifth equals 0 0.78 times x. Just divide. Divide by 0 0.78 on both sides. And now we're just left with x. So let's find x divided by 0.78. And... Three sig, uh, this one had two sig figs, so technically we should have two sig figs in the answer. So we'll say 2.8x equals 2.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So x equals 2.8 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. And keep in mind that the x value was the hydroxide. So the OH minus concentration equals... I guess I'll put it down here, 2.8 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. Now, we have to check because we have to do the 5% rule just to make sure that this answer is correct and acceptable. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make a little check just to make sure that we could have gotten rid of these minus x's and plus x's. So what we do is we take the answer that we got and divide it by the initial on the reactant side. So in this case, it would be 1.25 and times that by 100, right? Because you're getting a percent. So if I just do that, I take two point, actually this should be 2.9 if we did round to two sig figs. So sorry about that guys, let me just change this up. 2.9 times 10 to the negative five, 
times 10 to the negative 5. But still, we divide by 1.25. So 2.9 times 10 to the negative 5th divided by 1.25 times that by 100, and we're nowhere near 5%. The 5% rule just states that if this answer that you get is higher than 5%, you got to go back. You got to go back and put in your minus x's. But we're good here. So this is our final answer. The OH minus concentration is 2.9 times 10 to the negative fifth. I really hope this helps. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And I hope you guys are all doing well out there. Let's keep working hard. And I will see you in later lessons. Okie dokie. Bye-bye.